So um, our next presenter is um, Joe Harrison from Washington State University. Greetings, my name is Joe Harrison, and I'll be giving this talk today on the topic of characterization of generic E. coli and salmonella in pre and post anaerobically digested dairy manure. This project was supported by an NRCS conservation innovation grant. In particular, this study is gonna look at aspects related to antimicrobial resistance. So with regard to the project, it was a partnership for a sustainable future with Qualco Energy, who was a partnership of the Tulalip tribes, Native American tribe here in Northwest Washington, the Northwest Chinook Recovery Group, and the Snohomish Skycomish Agricultural Alliance, a group of dairy and beef producers in the area. Their aim was to support environmental projects that maintain agricultural river corridors, particularly as it related to shellfish business, the fisheries, and the culture of the Native American tribes. The Coco Anaerobic Digester Project was originally designed to be a community anaerobic digester with up to five to seven dairies contributing manure to the project. When it first opened up, it only had manure coming from one dairy and currently has manure coming from two dairies. The goals of the project were to have renewable energy production in the form of methane to electricity, waste management as related to decreasing odor, pathogen reductions, nutrient management in regard to nutrient transformation and cycling of nutrients back to the farm, and then the possibility of value-added products such as compost solids, which could be sold, and the formation of struvite, a phosphorus-based fertilizer, which could be sold off farm. This is an aerial view of the general layout in this area with the digester being central to this map. See a lot of the blue here is surface water, of course of concern as it relates to environmental issues um, by the local tribes. There's another aerial view, gives a little bit better close up of the actual digester site. Digester being this uh, gray rectangle box here, um, and it is a plug flow design type digester. There was a central receiving pit here in the middle, which received manure, um, and it was pumped via underlying pipelines to this particular site. And then um, here in the lower right hand side, we have two uh, rather large lagoons, which held the liquid manure after anaerobic digestion and removal of the solids. And then this was used for irrigation and fertilization of growing forage crops. This is a cartoon type schematic of the, of the operation. Again, we can see the receiving tank here where we had manure came in from a digester, excuse me, from a farm. And then um, when the material comes out of the anaerobic digester, went to an AD solids building, then went to some uh, cylindrical composting, um, devices which then uh, moved that material on out and could be used for, for sale off farm. The first part of our project was involved in looking at a number of classes of organisms and the general kill or die off that occurred as a result of going through the digester. And here we've uh, shown a, a picture or a schematic of the generic E. coli counts as they dropped every, after going through the digester. We looked at the receiver bar here um, we can see accounts of about 32,000. And when we looked at the fluent coming out, we had counts of about 104. So lung scale here on the left, if, you, if that's more familiar to you, um, but we basically had about 99.7 uh, or nearly 100% kill with regard to generic E. coli. We looked at enterococcus, um, pretty hardy organisms. Um, we didn't have quite as much of a drop, but we still uh, got 93% kill. Uh, or die off going through the digester. Um, again, looking at this last blue bar and the first green bar being the receiver and then the effluent. But during the course of making presentations of this information in local field days, the question began uh, to be brought up about whether or not actually the bugs that came out of the digester were more hardy, or were they antibiotic resistant, or were they some sort of super bugs? And so we decided to to look at this in more detail. So that's what we're reporting on here, the rest of the presentation today. 
So the anaerobic digester was a plug flow design with a capacity of approximately 6.1 million liters. It was operated at 38 degrees C or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 17 day retention time. Inputs to the anaerobic digester were 70% dairy cow manure and 30% pre-consumer food waste from the dairy farm where the AD was located and from local food processors, respectively. The salmonella and generally E. coli were isolated from samples collected before and after anaerobic digestion. The GEC isolates were characterized by sugar fermenta fermentation profiles, as noted here, by a number of these sugars, and also with the use of the medias of mac and mug. And then in addition to this, we also looked at the, uh, these GEC isolates with regard to their genetics and used the repetitive extragenic palindromic chain reaction, or what's more commonly known as REP-PCR, uh, and then followed by awards cluster analysis. We separated these into serum groups, and then based on that, uh, we used the Kirk-Bauer disk diffusion method to identify antibiotic resistance, and the antibiotics uh, are noted here. Um, I will not try to uh, pronounce all of those, but you can see there is quite a, a suite of different antibiotics that we did look at. So what we learned with regard to the generic E. coli was specifically in relationship to antibiotic resistance that um, isolates were, that had antibiotic resistance were about 22% before and 19% after anaerobic digestion, respectively. So a very small difference between the two, slight drop um, in the samples coming out. So the uh, basic conclusion from this was that um, and this was on the clustering by the sugar fermentation analysis initially, um, that we did not see any, any difference um, in the effect of the anaerobic digester on, on these organisms. This is a dendogram of the sugar fermentation cluster analysis, and the y-axis here shows that um, it's a scale of dissimilarity measure. Um, and so we can see that we've got basically about um, kind of five major clusterings that occur here in the course of this, uh, this dendogram. We ran the statistics of antibiotic resistance uh, for these generic E. coli. Um, the chi-square showed that there really was no difference due to anaerobic digestion and the fermentation cluster approach. This is the rep PCR picture of the, the, the um, output from, from running these rep PCR analyses, and you can see we kind of ended up with about five distinct groupings here, um, kind of highlighted in the, with the yellow highlighter. And when we took those and looked at their data distribution, uh, here in the left-hand column, we have groupings one through five, and then the first two columns are pre-AD and whether or not they were either susceptible or resistant, and then the next, or the right-hand two columns are where the it was post-AD samples and whether they were susceptible or resistant. So let's kind of focus on the, the resistant columns in both pre and, and post-AD. I think it'll be the easiest way to look at this. Um, with gripping one, we had no resistant um, organisms pre-AD. Uh, we had three that were resistant post-AD with the first grouping. Second grouping, we had five resistant pre-AD and we had three resistant post AD, so a reduction in that case. In the case of the grouping three, we didn't have any resistant, either pre or post. And grouping four, we had uh, three resistant pre AD and none post AD. And then with the fifth grouping, we had no organisms resistant pre AD, and we had one that had resistance post AD. The Acronyms here noted in parentheses are uh, spelled out here in greater detail at the bottom of this slide. So you can actually specifically see which antibiotics. In some case, we had an organism that would be susceptible to, um, or excuse me, resistant to multiple uh, antibiotics. We did the statistics on these as a group. Uh, it turned out that uh, with Fisher's exact test, um, there was really was no selection occurring, and that the outputs were equaling inputs, and um, we, we just did not, at least in this study, see any, any effect 
with this group of organisms. With salmonella, um, we looked at them in a predominant serogroups. Um, and uh, the predominant groups that we did see in the serogroups were B, C1, and E1. And they were there at a percentage of 23%, 9%, and 2%. Um, with regard to antimicrobial mite, antimicrobial resistance pre and post AD. Analysis did show a significant interaction between salmonella group and source and sera group versus AMR. We'll go into that in a little more detail. It's, it's kind of confusing to, to um, describe this. Um, no interaction was observed between source, that being pre and post AD, and antimicrobial resistance for salmonella. So the conclusion being there was no uniform effect for salmonella as a group. We looked at um, these different serogroups. So these are the actual numbers. Again, let's focus on the resistant columns. That'll be the middle column here and then the far right column. With serogroup uh, B, we saw one organism was resistant pre-AD, 10 were resistant post-AD. C1, we saw four pre-AD resistant, zero post-AD. C2, there were eight pre-AD resistant, zero post-AD. E1, there was zero and zero. And then for K, it was two and two. So overall, as we look at the salmonella as a group, um, we saw that uh, there really was no effect uh, of AD. And that's what the statistics show here, depending on what configuration we look at and the, uh, the model that we would put in for the chi-square comparison. Um, so if you look at the bottom of this table, really this kind of summarizes uh, some of the information on the previous table, which may have seemed a bit confusing. Um, a serotype may become more resistant as it goes through the digester, or a serotype may become less resistant. We saw both of those things occur. And a serotype might not survive. So we really have three different things could possibly go on. Um, and But collectively, as we looked at the salmonella as a group of organisms, we saw no difference due to uh, anaerobic digestion treatment. So overall summary is that the anaerobic digester effect on microbial species um, is randomly selective rather than differentially selective, and that the antibiotic resistant profiles for salmonella and generic were not changed by passing through the AD. When we used the biofermentation profile with the generic E. coli, they were not changed by, this was aspect was not changed by going through the AD. And then when we used the rep PCR technique to look at um, genetics of the E. coli, generic E. coli, these isolates did not identify a difference due to passing through the AD. So thank you for listening to this presentation. I wish I was with you there in person, but Alaska Airlines uh, canceled so many of their flights this week, I just was not able to get to Ohio. So I hope you're having a great meeting, and um, thanks for listening.